Hello, or alternatively, hey, yo, peep the handbook. <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, hi. Today I want to start a small series as a spin-off of my usual book recommendations video in which I talk about individual books to a deeper level. This will probably not be too popular, but I hope it's nonetheless educational for some. On today's installment of Peep the Handbook, <laughs> again, I'm sorry about that, we'll uh, cover uh, Qaddafi's uh, The Green Book, a very interesting and well-written work in my opinion. Two anecdotes from my life. I had a teacher in high school who used to say that uh, Qaddafi had his green book, Mao had his red book, and this particular teacher in question had her own little red book where she'd lock the grades of the students. I don't know why that came to mind, it just did. Um, but secondly, and more relevant to the work itself, is that it's written in relatively simple language. A Libyan friend of mine used that as a criticism of the work, uh, not realizing that a high academic language not accessible to common everyday people is the mark of someone either not writing for a general audience or someone incapable of translating their thoughts simply to a general audience. Kind of why Mao is such a pleasure to read, a very high-level thinker who managed to explain observations and concepts very simply. Anyways, on to the work, which you can get a PDF copy of on Libgen along with pretty much every other book in existence. The book is divided into three sections. The solution of the problem of democracy, the authority of the people, based. The solution of the economic problem, socialism, beyond based. And the social basis of the third universal theory. The entire work is around 100 pages, give or take, which definitely adds to the many merits of the work. The first segment, the solution of the problem of democracy, the authority of the people, concerns itself with, unsurprisingly, the question of authority. A relevant quote is, All political systems in the world today are a product of the struggle for power between alternative instruments of government. This struggle may be peaceful or armed, as is evidenced among classes, sects, tribes, parties, or individuals. The outcome is always the victory of a particular governing structure, be it that of an individual, group, party, or class, and the defeat of the people, the defeat of genuine democracy. What immediately stands out to me is the subtle lack of class analysis framing the victory of one class over another as the defeat of genuine democracy. Not to bring in the Khrushchevite revisionism tirade, but yeah, a little. The concept of the state of the whole people is a flawed one as the only true democracy is when the working class has political power and the capitalist class is deprived of it. Of course, once they cease to be capitalists, then that's a different question. To Qaddafi's merit, though, his point is more subtle than this and we'll get onto that in the next section. In a mockery of, for example, American-style elections, Qaddafi states, for when votes are distributed among several candidates, though one polls more than the other, the sum of the votes received by those who received fewer votes might well constitute an overwhelming majority. However, the candidate with fewer votes wins and his success is regarded as legitimate and democratic. In actual fact, dictatorship is established under the cover of false democracy. This is the reality of the political system prevailing in the world today. An ideal example is that the winning presidential candidate in the United States is did not vote, rather than whatever blue or red tie puppet is used to delude the American people for these four years. Furthermore, Qaddafi criticizes the very existence of parliaments as authorities acting on behalf of the people rather than the people exercising political power themselves. Parliaments have been a legal barrier between the people and the exercise of authority, excluding the masses from meaningful politics and monopolizing sovereignty in their place. People are left with only a facade of democracy, manifested in long queues to cast their election ballots. Gaddafi do be spitting though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that as well. His criticism even extends to parties themselves as representing only segments of the population and hence a tyrannical minority. This interestingly stands in stark contrast to the Leninist concept of a vanguard party in which the most class conscious members of the proletariat constitute the leading body. His fundamental criticism isn't against socialist parties though but those of the more liberal traditions. In fact the entire work fundamentally criticizes liberal European formulations of parties, parliaments and state institutions. Furthermore, he links his personal experiences with tribal politics to modern parties by stating the party system is the modern equivalent of the tribal or sectarian system. In discussing class specifically, Qaddafi notes something interesting. Any class which inherits a society also inherits its characteristics. If the working class, for example, subdues all other classes of a particular society, it then becomes its only heir and forms its material and social base. The heir acquires the traits of those from whom it inherits though this may not be evident all at once. With the passage of time, characteristics of the other eliminated classes will emerge within the ranks of the working class itself. The members of the new society will assume the attitudes and perspectives appropriate to their newly evolved characteristics. Thus, the working class will develop a separate society, possessing all of the contradictions of the old society. This is not an analysis altogether missing from Marxist thinkers either. His idea is, rather than resisting other class elements emerging within the proletarian party itself, 
we should get rid of the entire idea and basically succumb to the immutable law of nature for, for example, bourgeois interests to return. Gaddafi basically concludes that since class struggle will continue in one way or another, instability will inevitably rise again. He presents the solutions shortly after, but I personally strongly disagree with this analysis. Class struggle happens on all societies, and it's myopic to assume that solely class dictatorship in the form, for example, the dictatorship of the proletariat, will somehow be destined for constant struggle. Class struggle is like the air around us, both under socialism and capitalism. Under capitalism, granted, much more patently felt, but under socialism, from small-scale market activity amongst the peasantry to the petty bourgeois aspirations of the intelligentsia, both economic and ideological class interest presents itself at the surface and needs to be combated. Gaddafi's class analysis of society is lacking, in my opinion, and there's a lot more to say, but we can move on for now. It's safe to say, though, that his general analysis or criticism isn't directed, again, at socialist parties or socialist countries, but more or less the liberal European manifestation of these political institutions. His solution is popular conferences and people's committees. TLDR, a form of various interlinking committees with direct democratic participation. These committees play a similar role to ministries and are held accountable to the people themselves within those same committees. These lead into a general people's congress, which in a way basically acts as the supreme soviet. At least to me, they're surprisingly similar. But rather than it representing the majority interests of the vast bulk of humanity in capitalist and post-capitalist society, that being the proletariat and allied classes, it represents the whole people. Khrushchevite revisionism, blah blah, yeah, I'm, I'm in full agreement on that. <laughs> I'll generally skip over the law establishment point in the book because this has a lot more to do with cultural differences than anything else. His opinion on freedom of the press too, I'll skip, although they're half decent. Concerning the second part, the solution of the economic problem, socialism, Gaddafi has this to say. Wage earners are but slaves to the masters who hire them. They are temporary slaves and their slavery lasts as long as they work for wages from employers, be they individuals or the state. The worker's relationship to the owner of the productive establishment and to their own interest is similar under all prevailing conditions in the world today, regardless of where ownership is right or left. Pretty good, except for the last sentence, as he seems to be under the impression that wage labor is the colloquial definition rather than the strictly defined thing it is under Marxist definitions. Regardless, I do think he did read Marx. Wage labor is more than simply getting a wage, and historic socialisms did not have wage labor. Furthermore, he leans back on the of the whole people idea by claiming true public ownership benefiting both all of society and the individual needless distinction, in my opinion, can only take place when everyone owns, rather than only a single class, that being the proletariat. Regardless, you can't disagree too much with this conclusion, that being workers should directly organize their workplaces, as well as form syndicates for production, in which their income is a share of production and cooperatives for consumption. Honestly, all the rest is pretty good stuff, that is relatively inoffensive. Housing is a human right, people should have needs provided for, good public transportation systems, etc, etc. His thesis wraps up with, the final step is for the new social society to reach a stage in which profit and money disappear. Society will become fully productive, the material needs of society will be met. Basically a semi-definition of communism, interestingly enough. Possibly his red angles too. Especially so when you take all the rest of it to its logical conclusion, with some caveats. A lot of the third section is culture dependent and I don't expect Westerners would be able to relate too much to it, but it's still an interesting read nonetheless. So, uh, all in all, should you peep this handbook? <laughs> this, is a, this is such a stupid, god this is so stupid. Yes, I think. Uh, Ratafi is definitely a slept on thinker, if I can even say it that way, with some worthwhile things to say. If people will read garbage like Devoir for fuck's sake, they can spend an afternoon and read some Gaddafi. Yeah, honestly, I do recommend it. It's only like 100 or so pages. And with that said, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoy this format, then let me know. And if you enjoy what I do, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help. I'd like to thank my patrons, so thank you to Darren Yu, Melancholic, Seth, Scott Bramer, Augustus T. Williams, Michael Maximov, IDK, Comrade Geo, Frank Cardenas, Gemma Gang, Gustavo, 